So I've got 20 minutes to tell you about security enhancements, okay? So um, I gave this talk in 40 minutes uh, earlier in the week, so I'll go a little bit uh, quicker than I uh, did at that point. Um, just go to uh, the, the first point uh, about Postgres security is it's uh, protected by uh, a secret team of uh, security experts that uh, guard the code. So uh, we don't actually publicize that very often, but you may know about the existence of uh, security at uh, postgresql.org. Uh, so if you write an email to uh, that address, it gets responded to by uh, a team of people that are as yet uh, unnamed uh, in any forum. But uh, the most important thing to understand is that Postgres is secure because there are people protecting it, okay? Uh, and um, in some cases, you'll see uh, companies saying, um, we provide security for Postgres. Well, actually, it's this team that does uh, the majority of that work, okay? So all of the assignments of CV numbers, discussions about disclosure and such like uh, come from this team. Um, so what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, the new features in Postgres 10. Uh, and uh, many of you will know that uh, we've had uh, a number of different uh, password facilities uh, within Postgres for a number of years. Plain text password obviously is not particularly useful. Uh, so we've actually had MD5 password protections. Um, what we now know is that the MD5 algorithms are not particularly useful, and what we need is something much better than uh, simple 128-bit uh, hashing. So what we're moving to is uh, SHA-2 256-bit encryption as used by Bitcoin, uh, which you would think would be enough, but there is a, a, a SHA-512 uh, bit as well that we could have chosen. Now, the problem with that is it's extremely slow. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we've chosen in this release is just to implement the 256-bit version. Now, that isn't the only thing that we've done. And in fact, that's not really the most important thing because what we've uh, done is we've looked at the threat model that we're trying to protect against uh, and thought about the fact that storing passwords on the client is difficult. Uh, storing on, on the server even is difficult if somebody uh, manages to get access to the server. Uh, and worse than that, intercepting things in the middle uh, of your conversation uh, is also a problem. And the fourth thing that's a problem is um, uh, actually recording uh, the responses between the server and the client and replaying them at a later date in order to gain access to the server. So there's actually four different uh, pr main problems uh, that uh, we would like to protect ourselves against. And that's lucky because there's a, a protocol called Scram uh, that allows us to uh, protect against all four of those problems. Uh, it's an IETF uh, RFC. It stands for Salted Challenge and Response Authentication Mechanism. Uh, and what it actually does is involves uh, more than one uh, challenge and response uh, messages passing between the client and the server. Now, I'll come back to that in a sec, but the, uh, uh, the, the Scram protocol is actually implemented uh, using... Uh, an underlying protocol called SASL, uh, and uh, what this does is allow us to future-proof the, um, uh, the protocol choices that we're making by uh, producing an abstract layer uh, by which we can uh, interact with the server. So what we've actually implemented in this release is Scram on top of the SASL protocol. What does that mean? Uh, what that means is that we'll have the same security as a number of other vendors, but also we'll have future-proof security in the sense that if we invent uh, future protocols, we will be able to implement them really quickly. 
So what we're talking about is uh, we'll be moving to a situation where almost every release uh, we will be able to keep up with authentication technology to the point that um, we'll be able to stay abreast of the, the latest security uh, enhancements from the industry. Now we've done that in a number of other areas uh, where we've been the first people to implement uh, database consistency models or the first people to implement new indexing technology. And this actually uh, is a very important new feature for uh, security. Now obviously uh, what I'm talking about here is actually even more important in the context of services moving into the cloud because now we're actually uh, looking at a world where uh, the security is stronger when using Postgres in the cloud, which is a, a very good thing. So what we've implemented uh, in this particular release is not actually directly pluggable by extensions, but it will be extendable within the code for future releases. So in Postgres 10, uh, we've implemented Scram SHA-256, uh, and there's a, a quick example of how to uh, store that uh, uh, for a particular role. Uh, the implementation is backwards compatible, so if you upgrade to 10, it's not gonna get in your way, but what you do have is the ability to use this new feature if you choose. Uh, so there's some settings in the pghba.conf that allow you to take advantage of these uh, new settings. And uh, what we're able to do is store the, uh, the role password column in the pgauthid catalog table can now uh, store within it verifiers uh, that meet the SCRAM standard. So we'll be able to store MD5 passwords as well as scram passwords in the server. Now when I say store the password, the approved term now is verifier. Because the way that scram works is if somebody gets hold of your database, for example a backup or a dump, they may have the verifier information but because of the way that Scram works, that will not be enough for them to directly crack uh, the, the passwords used. So there's actually um, uh, built into the Scram system is uh, this concept of multiple iterations uh, that allows, it to, uh, allows us to make it computationally intensive to actually crack passwords. And as a result, uh, it will be much less feasible uh, for people that don't possess uh, very large uh, cracking arrays uh, to actually get inside uh, the, uh, the, the database itself. So a, a very important implementation. At the same time, we've also made it possible to uh, produce dumps that don't contain uh, the password or verifier information. Uh, and uh, that works with a number of implementations that have got uh, sort of high security features added, uh, for example, RDS. Uh, other changes in this release, uh, row level security has been substantially improved to make the planning work very efficiently in all cases. Uh, and that's actually a very advanced implementation. So row level security will still work even when you're doing quite complex joins uh, in your SQL. So as a result, uh, I can say that uh, with these changes, row level security is completely full strength uh, and ready for, for very wide use within your organizations. So whether you're looking at uh, sort of military grade security, medical privacy, or perhaps uh, uh, some form of multi-tenant access or will all be possible with these new facilities. Uh, we've also made uh, quite a lot of steps forward, uh, removing uh, requirements for super user from within Postgres. And um, they, uh, the last part of that was committed this afternoon uh, in a patch called Monitoring Roles. Uh, and for the first time, we've actually got some default uh, no login roles that will allow us to, uh, uh, to make it easier to uh, 
uh, to grant access to various kinds of monitoring systems. So these are standard uh, default roles that will be available in, in all Postgres implementations, uh, and that should make it uh, easier to use, or at least easier than it was before. So uh, some quite important changes. So uh, the balance of features in this release is a good balance between uh, uh, advanced techie features and also usability features that have been uh, causing people problems or minor annoyances uh, over the time. So, um, one last point is uh, logical replication. Uh, that's uh, looking to get some kind of uh, security model associated with it as well. One of the things that we'd like to do is make it very easy to use from a security perspective. Uh, so we're hoping that uh, that will be something that we can change in this release. So um, thank you very much. Uh, that was my 20-minute uh, overview of security features in Postgres 10. Uh, does anybody have any questions uh, about these features that I can attempt to answer for you? Okay, it's getting towards that time of day, isn't it? Where it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, get off now. So, Okay, uh, well, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy the conference. And I'd specifically like to thank the organisers uh, for organising uh, a, a great event, one of our largest to date. So please at least say thank you very much to the organisers. So.